Good evening, Singapore. Good evening to the West Coast GRC. Now, many Singaporeans might not know, but I used to teach children with autism. I have volunteered with children with special needs when I was in university. And when I graduated, I applied to a private school to continue my work with children with autism. Now, I love children, and I enjoy playing with my two nieces. Teaching children with autism takes effort and commitment. Our sessions with the children were one-on-one. -on -one. Now, I would put in special effort to make my lessons interesting and engaging. Once, I built a small theatre with little puppets that I made for my child. You feel very happy when you see the child break into laughter as you tell a story using the puppets. But he was very smart. He would look behind my theatre because he know that the hands are making the puppets. And this is something you need to know. Children with autism can be very intelligent. Sometimes in public, we might think they behave awkwardly, but I hope that we can learn not to judge. Now, when we appreciate everyone as equal citizens of our country, we will learn that each and every one has the capability to grow to their fullest potential. And that is what we must believe in all our citizens. Now, this is also something that touches my heart, education. We have not put enough resources to guide our children with special needs. Now, I know a family who has to work several jobs and to downgrade their home because they had to send two children, both with autism, to our school. But it is tough and it is very expensive. As a government, we have to ask ourselves, what is the responsibility to our citizens? Now, if we value our people, then we need to invest in our people so that our people can blossom as thinking individuals and help our country grow. We have a responsibility to our country and our citizens. Now, Lee Sian Long said in his speech in his rally yesterday that the PAP has managed to make every school a good school. Do you agree? Now, to be clear, we have a good education system in Singapore. It has educated our people. But we must never stop making our education system a better one, a more equal one, and one that is fair to all our citizens. Now, the first question we have to ask is this. Do we believe that all our citizens have the ability to be the best they can be? Or do we believe that only an elite few can make it? I believe that everyone can become unique individuals in their own right. And who should be respected and who will excel. This is what I believe. Now, Lee Sian Long said that the PAP has managed to make every school a good school. Maybe he hasn't looked at the statistics. First, class sizes in Singapore are too big. Singapore has the largest class sizes among the developed countries. Second, Singaporeans pay one of the most expensive, if not the most expensive, university fees in the world. Third, the PAP spends $400 million in scholarships for international students but it does not spend that amount of money for Singaporeans. I estimate that more than 50% of international students get scholarships, but only less than 5% of Singaporeans get scholarships. Fourth, the PAP spends the lowest in education among the developed countries. And fifth, when our students go into the workforce, Singapore has the largest wage gap among the developed country. Now, when we say that every school is a good school, what do we mean? 
I believe that class sizes should be reduced so that our teachers will have more time to develop each and every of our child. I believe that the workload of teachers need to be reduced so that our teachers can focus on developing strategies to guide our children. Now I believe that if Singapore has become too expensive but the government has become so rich, then we have a duty to invest back in our children. Finally, we have to implement a minimum wage so that the wages for the lower income will increase and the wage gap will be reduced. Now Singaporeans have paid a lot into the CPF. Many Singaporeans ask me, why is the CPF locked up inside? When I use my CPF to pay for my children, children's university, why do I have to pay an accrued interest? When I use my CPF to pay my, for my housing, why do I have to pay for an accrued interest? Since the CPF is my money, surely we can be trusted to manage our own money. Now, if the PAP does not trust Singaporeans, how can we trust them? Now, if the PAP does not return our CPF, how can we trust the PAP? Now, yesterday, Lee Xiong Long said that the CPF can earn an interest rate of as high as 6%. He asked, so why, when you go to the opposition, opposition rallies, they never mention this? Because if they mention this, nobody will vote for the opposition. Now, maybe Lee Hsien Long wasn't at our rally yesterday. Of course he wasn't. He didn't hear our speeches. Today, let's respond to Lee Hsien Long again. First, will Lee Hsien Long tell us how many people exactly can get 6% on their CPF? Now, second, will Lee Hsien Long tell us how much of our CPF actually gets 4.5%? Third, will Lee Hsien Long tell us how much of our CPF gets only 2.5%? Lee Hsien Long says that the CPF can get as high as 6%. But what is the truth? The truth is that most of our CPF only gets 2.5%. Where is the 6%? Why won't Lee Hsien Long say that? Because if the PAP mentioned this, nobody will vote for the PAP. Now, in fact, you won't let... Why won't Lee Hsien Long let Singaporeans know how many Singaporeans cannot meet the CPF minimum sum? We estimate that as many as 90% of Singaporeans cannot meet the CPF minimum sum. Why won't the PAP tell Singaporeans? Why won't the PAP be transparent to Singaporeans? Why is the people not Singaporeans are not silly. They are not ignorant. They understand. They are wise. I agree. We are not silly. We are not ignorant. We understand. And we are wise. And that is why we will vote the opposition. And that is why we will vote the Reform Party. Yeah. Now, Lee Hsien Long said that he thinks that the CPF is taking good care of the old people. Then Lee Hsien Long, we are going into the Amokyo GRC. Are you ready to lose your seat at the Amokyo GRC to collect cardboards? We will take good care of you when we go into government. Now, if we believe in equality, then we must believe in equality. Our policies cannot be divisive and our policies cannot break our people. 
Now I believe in a Singapore where all people are confident of themselves. I believe in a Singapore where all citizens are proud enough to speak up. I believe in a Singapore where we will stand up and where we will fight for ourselves. And I believe that in SG50, Singapore and Singaporeans will finally stand our own, stand our own two feet and gain independence back from the PAP. Now we must never forget what our nation stands for. We must never forget what our fathers and what our forefathers fought for our country. We must never forget the sweat and toil that they gave so that we could become a more equal society. We must never forget that. It is time to regain our right, our land, our country and take back what we own and take back what belongs to us Singaporeans. Now let us put our strength back into the country. Let us help our country move forward once again so that our citizens will be protected. Let us make the change and let us fight for a better future tomorrow, today. No Majula Singapura! Madeka! Madeka Singapura! Vote for us! Vote for the Reform Party! On 9 11, when you go to a polling booth, mark a cross next to the Reform Party. Fight for our own future! Thank you! Thank you, Mr. Roy!